Do you know the story of Oliver Anthony? He's this guy who was the number one song in the country. This guy gave himself to Christ, but it was something to the tune of, please God, if you can straighten my life, if you could just straighten my life out, I will, I will dedicate myself to you and I will, I'll be on the right track. There's a lot of things in Proverbs and Ecclesiastes that make sense and are, are timeless to today. Well, welcome to the Evangelical Eddie channel. Lately, I've been talking about how Joe Rogan seems to be having a lot of spiritual discussions and specifically Christian discussions on his channel lately. And again, remember, his podcast is the largest podcast in the U.S. and I believe in the world, for that matter, in terms of listeners uh, on a daily basis. So this is important to see an opportunity for the gospel to be spread via guests that he's been having on lately. The latest is Oliver Anthony. If you're not familiar with him, he's got the big uh, hit song. His post, supposedly some guy that was living off the grid recorded some song and it went viral and uh, really spoke to the hearts of a lot of people. So anyway, let's go on with this interview. This is really fascinating. Haven't seen this happen too much. Someone coming on Joe Rogan's podcast and reading scripture. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. But um, That's pretty profound. That's pretty profound. If people could just have enough open-mindedness to just read a little bit of Proverbs and just see what it has to say, I think like it would make the world a better place. There's a lot of truth in those words. Now, Rogan could have said that's profound and then moved on, but he actually probes further about his come to Jesus moment. Now, I'm not sure if he means come to Jesus moment as in a time when you just had to turn things around in your life, or if he's specifically speaking to his salvation moment. Maybe it's up to Oliver Anthony to decide what he means by the question. But nonetheless, love seeing this conversation on the Joe Rogan podcast. Was there like a moment with you? Because I've read the legend story, but I wanted to ask you this in live in person. Was there a moment when you had like a literal come to Jesus moment where you realized oh, yeah. you were at rock bottom? Yeah, I was at a point where I was having, man, I don't even think I'd call it panic attacks. It was just like, I was so, everything was just so screwed up that are just, I guess now I realize there's stress and anxiety related, but I thought I really thought I was going to die. Now, what's so great about Rogan probing this question is comments he has made in the past were not very flattering to Christianity. Christianity, at the end of the day, with no proof, everything is mythology. Everything with no proof. With proof, then you examine the proof. It's super simple. If you have some proof that there was a God, that this God had one son, and he made this son come down and get the f beat out of him and nailed to a board so that we could all have no sin. Do you have, can you show me some studies? So the fact that he's now finding some interest in this is a great sign. It describes like where I was, like that guy found a lot of peace, like from this book and from, from looking at things in a different way. Yeah. From looking at things through the eyes well, yeah, of scripture. And if you can take us to like, what was like the day you picked it up? What what was the feeling that you had? Like, what caused you to act? What what was it like when you did it? Yeah, I mean, I'd been reading it here and there, off and on, and I had for like off and on for a long time. Like, because I again, I was introduced to it as a kid. I remember being in the truck after that, just like, and I just yeah, I just had a breakdown moment. I was just just crying and um, was just just I just felt hopeless, like like almost the way a child feels hopeless when they, you know, like you can't find your parent or something like a, like a four year old that can't find his parents or something. I was just like, just didn't have anything left in me. And I don't know. I just, uh, I just decided like right then and there, I was like, I know I can't do this anymore. And, but I know, I know that I can, well, I'll just call it good. Whatever I've done up from, from up until I was 30 or whatever, 31, like I'll, we'll just call that good and I'll start over again. And, um, I'll make him the focus and not me.